Hello, everyone, and welcome to our September series, Leading from the Library Premiere. I'm Heather Worrell, the Executive Administrator of Digital Innovation in Jefferson County Public Schools and the Library Media Specialist Liaison for the Kentucky Department of Ed. And today I'm joining you from Seneca High School in JCPS, where they are using Google Sites for their staff digital infrastructure, Google Forms for their senior transition conferences, which are happening right upstairs today. And right now they have a Google Classroom training going on with Danielle Washburn. Uh, so big shout out to Principal Kim Morales and her team for their digital leadership. Yay! And I'm so excited to be joined by uh, the awesome Kentucky Go Digital Live team. We have Courtney DeRossett, who is the CIO and Director of Federal Programs for Floyd County Schools. We have Elaine Abenatha, who's the Technology Resource Teacher for McCracken County Schools, and Brooke Whitlow, who will be jumping in in just a little bit. She's the Community and School Media Coordinator for Nelson County Schools. Hey, ladies, uh, it's great to see you. How have you been since our last show? Well, we're doing awesome. I um, uh, just keep them busy and lots of really neat uh, in influences throughout the district and making sure everybody is breaking down those silos. Same here. Same here. Everyone is excited to see how digital tools can make life a little more efficient. So to see that start to be embedding throughout the district and state is really exciting. Very, very cool. Uh, so great to see you ladies. Uh, we are also joined today by the one and only chief STLP enthusiast at KDE, Jeff Sabolski. Hey Jeff, how's hey, it going? Buddy. It's great. It's a busy time of year. Glad I could uh, get to spend some time with you fine folks today. All right. I know you've been super busy, Jeff, as STLP has been ramping up, which is uh, what we're going to be talking about today. So excited to hear more from you. Big and day. now to our special guests. As you know, our September series is called Leading from the Library. And we are so excited to bring to you two remarkable Kentucky library media specialists who are doing just that. Donna Morris is a library media specialist from Daniel Boone Elementary School in Madison County, where she does an exceptional job of leading and empowering her students through the creation of innovative projects that have gone on to STLP at both the regional and state level. Katie Newton is a library media specialist from JT Alton Middle School in Hardin County, which is actually where I first started teaching before I was a library media specialist. Little fun fact. Um, and she has done a remarkable job of leading innovation opportunities for students with her makerspace strategy. Hi, ladies. We are so very glad that you are sharing how you are leading from the library on today's show. So for our viewers, Brooke and Courtney will be taking questions from the YouTube live chat. Make sure you drop in there and introduce yourself. And if you have any questions for our guests, we will be happy to share those with them during the show. All right. Now on to our experts. Uh, Donna, we're going to start with you and you can take it away. Okay. Um. I am very excited to be here today. What are the keys to empowering uh, your student innovators uh, from the Library Media Center? Uh, I kind of went through this and thought about last year uh, how I built relationships with uh, the students that I was uh, working with in the club, um, per se, um, by interest surveys and using uh, tech skills assessments. Uh, that was where I started. And then I moved on uh, sharing all the ways you could get involved in STLP, uh, whether it be through regionals, uh, the showcases in particular, digital online projects that you could have judged, or the live contest at the state level. Um, Jeff, did you see how she stumbled a little bit with that? Because it's like, what do you say the worst contest title ever would you explain what that one is for us the digital dpoj yeah. digital, digital product online judging i have said over and over again is the is the most difficult lousiest title for anything <laughs> we do and so uh monday yeah. at our at, we just put out a challenge we're trying to rename the thing so as you folks are listening today and as donna i don't mean to interrupt you there donna but as folks that's want, okay be thinking about a cool title for this because dpoj is lame and we can do better than that so there you go it's another one of those acronyms that nobody knows what it really is until you explain it. So I also talk about um, how kids can do projects as individuals or in teams, um, partners, 
you know, there's a wide variety of ways that they can actually do these projects. The next one is to make students develop a plan of attack. And I usually, when they say they're interested in a particular category or one of the uh, showcase, I give them the rubrics so that they know from the get-go what they're going to be judged on. And then based on that, they need to kind of come up with a timeline. Uh, I give them due dates and they have to have things through. We need to make sure we hit deadlines. So then comes uh, conferencing time with them after they've chosen what they want to embark on. Um, I share tech tools that I know would be available to them to use or um, just by basically doing a Google search. If you're doing infographics, what kinds of tools could you use for uh, infographics? Uh, here's where the librarian in me comes out and teaching research skills. Uh, what knowledge for they embark on this project or what are they going to need to know in order to be successful? Citing sources. We don't want to steal anybody's ideas and want to give credit where credit is due. So that's another big key thing. And then locating uh, community support. This year, one of uh, our projects actually won second place for the Kentucky Heritage Council. And I reached out to our local tourism director to help us come up with a list of places uh, to feature in that uh, promotional video. So connecting them with someone in the community that might be a great resource. Next uh, is the biggest part of it all is giving them time to play. Some are gonna succeed, some are gonna fail, and this is where you're gonna see your leaders be born in all of these projects. And that's basically, I mean, student technology leadership program, leadership. There you go, Jeff, I've said it. It's a great way to build leaders within your school. I tried to find out what kind of activities or assignments teachers were having and instead of these kids working on a book report, we turned it into book trailers and got the teachers to agree to let them be able to turn in those assignments um, for uh, the same project that the other classmates were doing. And Donna, um, that's a great point. I'm, I'm going to reiterate that for you right go there. Go ahead. The big thing that has really been a success factor for folks with STLP that we hear from folks across the state is that cross-programming kind of that overlap of I did this project or created this product as something to demonstrate learning in the classroom. And then it fits perfectly into an STLP category. And you're saying that, you know, it's the flip-flop of that works just as well, too. If we're going to focus on something for STLP, often uh, making it really authentic is it can get credit or be used to demonstrate learning in the classroom as well. So that, that overlap is super important. And I love that you highlighted that because that is really over and over again, we hear from folks that say, you know, how do we make uh, you know, STB, STLP be so successful in our school? And over and over again, we hear people say, well, we just use the stuff that we're already doing. Things that we were already demonstrating, you know, we did documentary in social studies class and we submitted it for DPOJ. That's a great way to, to, to a perspective to bring to this is That's, use what you got. Sorry, Jeff, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's exactly like Whitney York is on the live chat from Murray and all the way from Murray across the state. Hi, Whitney. And uh, she said the same thing that so many times um, people think it's a club and that it's separate from instruction when it is exactly what instruction is supposed to look like. So she she's in the live chat giving you all an amen on that point. And I want to I want to give a, a third amen on that. Uh, I just had a great meeting with the principal of Seneca High School and we were talking about STLP and I told her, I said, as the school leader, she has 13, 1300 kids here. I said, put on your STLP glasses and look around your school 
and you will see STLP projects everywhere. Just have the, your ST, uh, our STLP coordinator who's remarkable here. Her name is uh, Sarah Bumpus. Just let Sarah know that you have an awesome project underway where kids are solving big problems and changing the world. And there's that thread of technology woven in there. And then let us know and that project can go on to regionals and your school has an STLP. So I just had that same conversation with the principal of this school today. Yeah, um, that I've tried to uh, start getting teachers to do more choice boards because everybody doing the same exact thing gets so boring, especially when it comes presentation time to see the same thing over and over again. So that's one thing I'm trying to um, get teachers more on board with is re releasing the reins on the assignment parameters and trying to get them to let kids venture out into different avenues, uh, whether it be some kid may need to do that poster and paper because they don't have technology at home. But if some kids want to make a, a YouTube video and recreate a scene out of the story, you know, it's all still knowledge that they can share with their fellow classmates. So let me go back to finish up. Donna, I was going to say, one of the things that I got to do was to share all those rubrics and make them visible for all the teachers across so that when they have those, like you said, those goggles on of projects, they kind of just can say, where would this fit in on those rubrics? And so just sharing those out and making them a known document that they can try to look through. And even as like a tool of what can you use those, what, what can I do for my lesson? Like what, and then maybe even looking through those rubrics and seeing that as well. So that will help. Okay. So uh, some keys uh, for the LMS, um, bookmark that website, stlp.education.ky.gov. It will be your um, Bible while you're helping those students. Cause it's got everything, the rubrics and, links and dates and Jeff's email address. And uh, the next thing is don't worry about being an expert yourself. Um, use your research skills or YouTube, whatever it takes. Um, I like to tell the kids that this is the time that they're probably going to be the teacher and I'm going to be the student uh, for some of these projects. Can we just uh, get an hallelujah, amen? <laughs> you just say that one more time so the people in the back can hear? Um, okay, so you can tell your students that this is the time that they can be the teacher and you're going to be the student because definitely they're more savvy than a lot of us adults right now. Absolutely. And, you know, and it's such a great opportunity. I know it's tough sometimes to take that backseat, but, man, talk about letting students follow, follow their passion projects and, and, and be that leader in the classroom. We talked about the birth of leadership. Man, there's nothing more uh, you know, igniting in a student than giving them the opportunity to teach other folks. And if they're teaching their peers, that's great. When they start teaching the adults and the other teachers, oh man, that is really, that's top notch stuff. So that's a great point, I love that. Mm -hmm. um, next, um, Madison County has been fortunate enough that um, they are very supportive of our STLP programs. And when new coordinators come on board in schools, they will tell us, start small, uh, get a you know small group of kids to work with, go to a regional, be observers, just walk around, talk to people, you know, build some excitement in your school. And then the next year, you can start with, you know, entering projects and maybe you just start with the digital projects and then, you know, on down the road there, they want us to do showcases and be, you know, fully involved in uh, the whole realm of STLP, but start small. So is it uh, Tina? Is Tina the one who is over everything? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What, Tina, she does a great job. Tina, what's her last name, Jeff? Tina Barrett. And Barrett, she that's right. In between Tina and Jacob Cecil uh, with the district level, which is a shout out to any of the CIOs, district tech folks. Um, uh, the key here is, I mean, what they're what what Don is really saying is that they're providing that support to the local schools, and that is so key 
to uh, uh, the opportunities for the students to trickle down to the students. But um, Tina's fantastic. Having that district support and leadership from the CIO through the digital learning coaches, the TRTs is, is so vital to helping because, man, there, there are so many different ways that they can connect you with different resources. And shout out to Tina and Jacob for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again for that kudo moment, Jeff. Um, so next, um, gosh, I got really excited when I delved into the Twitter world of actually using Twitter just for PD and gathering ideas. So definitely start following uh, KY Go Digital hashtag, uh, KYL Chat, and KY Tech Chat. Um, if you're not on Twitter, you need to get on Twitter. And lastly, have fun. Uh, the kids love to see you act a little crazy. And this is more a, a outlet that, yeah, you can, you know, have fun with the kids because everybody's learning together. Um, and lastly, I want to share some uh, successes that we had at my school last year. Um, so, Madison County also hosts their own technology extravaganza. Uh, so it's just anybody in Madison County schools. Uh, we have very similar uh, uh, projects uh, to STLP. Some of them cross over, some are unique to Madison County. Um, and so my school, we entered 175 projects which represented 109 students, which was 23% of our population. What? And, yeah, and we had uh, 105 winning projects. That was first place through fifth place. And they have categories of K2 and 3-5. And then there's a middle high school level as well. Uh, so 73 of those students won a first through fifth grade uh, for one of their projects, which was 15% of uh, the population and you can see there we have a nice traveling trophy that I would hope to keep for a long time here at Daniel Boone and uh, so last year in STLP I had 20 students that um, I worked with solely more like the club because this was my second year getting back into STLP and I kind of want to start small but we entered um, 12 of those DPOJ categories we had 24 entries. We had six state qualifiers. We won two, a first in music composition and second in the KSU GIS mapping. And um, here's where our music composition, uh, I asked our music teacher, I said, you know how to do digital music? Yeah, I love that. I play around with it all the time. Guess what? So I paired my student up with our music teacher and they went away with it and she did a phenomenal job. And then we entered seven of the live events that take place that day of the state competition. And we were successful in winning the second place for Kentucky Heritage Council. And that's again where I paired up those kids with someone in the community to share their knowledge. And then they took their technology skills and went away with the show. So. Uh, I would just like to say that I am very grateful for my county because they do support us very well in any kind of technology project that we want. You know, Jacob or Tina will try and get us the resources we need available. And I, I Don, I got to, I'm going to chime in here a little bit more. One, I just want to highlight, you know, we talk about sort of STLP, kind of our, our sort of guiding principles are, uh, design, make, connect, and learn. And you've really hit all of those parts, particularly the connect, that collaboration piece. As you, as you said, you know, walk, finding that, that expert, you were just in your school, went to your art teacher and said, or your music teacher and said, Hey, what do you do with digital music? I mean, that is the, that's really what we're talking about is STLP being your whole school. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the school can support and there's, everyone can play a role. And you think you've really capitalized on that. I will say that the tech extravaganza in Madison County, I have to give another, I know I'm giving lots of kudos to Tina and Jacob today, but man, let me tell you, you guys do it right. I, the first time I came, I really thought I was going to walk into, Tina invited me, come down for the tech extravaganza. I really thought I was walking in, you know, cafeteria, 
50, 60 folks hanging around. I mean, we're talking like there's hundreds and hundreds and all the families. It is yeah. a big deal. And actually I've, you know, and Tina knows this. I've, we've, I've sat back and said, man, that's a great idea. Why don't we do, we're going to do that at state. We're going to do that at state. So I've stolen a lot of ideas from yeah. you. Um, but you know, you guys are doing it right. I guess one question I would kind of have for you is from the uh, library media perspective, how, like if you could sum it up, how have you been able to support STLP from that role? Like how has that made it easier, more challenging? What, what has been the value of being the LMS with STLP? I guess, um, getting to dabble in a little bit of everything. You know, I see all the kids, I kind of know what all their curriculums are. So um, I can see one of their assignments or activities and go, oh, this is how we could pull something else in and make it a little different. Or, you know, not everybody has to do a PowerPoint on biographies let's do timelines, you know, one group do this, one group do this and somebody else do another. And then we all share them. You're all doing biographies, but we're just presenting the information in different ways. So that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Great perspective. Thank I'm you. so inspired. I'm going to pull a Brooke Whitlow. And <laughs> she always gets chills and gets excited. Um, the fact that that many students, get to have that experience before they even go to regional or states. I'm really inspired because, you know, sometimes you think you're doing good. And that's what I love about when we all get together like this on Twitter or the channel, because now I'm like, okay, I want to do that. I want my kids to have that experience. Um, so kudos to you all to working it so that they um, get recognized at every single level, not just regionals or state and more kids get to be in it. I'm blown away with how many Madison County that's when you are, putting it to the percentages of the district, how many kids are involved. Um, I know anyone that's watching this is, will echo, good job. Um, I think it's awesome. Yeah, uh, we went, um, we got Chromebooks last year, so there were five in every classroom and we had three carts. So a lot of times I had a cart in the library and we did all kinds of fun stuff. So Jeff, when you get those information that, Probably Daniel Boone has 425-ish participants this year. You know, it's true. I'm going to try and get free T-shirts for everybody. <laughs> I love that. And you we, know, that we won't be able to bring them all to the state, but. <laughs> and Allison. I'll talk to Jacob. You can bring him. Yeah. Allison Langley's on the live chat, and she's like, she's blown away by the numbers. So she's getting ideas. So we're, we're all going to be up in our participation, hopefully, Jeff, with, the, uh, with Donna's inspiration here. Well, thank you. And you know, Donna brings up a great point. I just want to point out too, like there's been a lot of questions. There's been a huge influx, obviously, of Chromebooks across the state. And a lot of folks are like, how can I use the Chromebooks with STLP? And how to, so oh, we, Google a, Classroom. <laughs> there you go. Go talk about that a little bit. Um, so the the core group of kids that I worked with um that went to state, uh, we basically set up Google Classroom and they were paired in their groups and I could shoot them links or activities. The rubrics were there for them. Then when they were turning in projects to me, it was easy access for me. And um, basically like when I had to fill out Jeff's stuff to enter the projects in January, it was just a lot of easy copy and paste, copy and paste into forms instead of like, everything being in one drive or, you know, all over the place. Yeah. So uh, I think you, did, we were talking offline, I think before this started, you had mentioned that maybe you were going to be in Lexington this Friday yes, for the Coordinator Friday. Connection. Yeah. Awesome. So, and, and a quick highlight there is there's some, we're going to have an opportunity Friday. We just had a great opportunity Monday in Jefferson County for the STLP Coordinators Connection. If you're not familiar with that, it's where we just sort of kick off the year, we invite coordinators in, new folks, digital learning folks, folks that have been around doing STLP for a while. And it's just a chance for everyone to share some of their success stories and hear from different folks. And uh, no stress, but boy, I really want, would love for you to share how you work with Google Classroom for those coordinators. I would okay. love that. So no pressure, but I just put you on the agenda. 
<laughs> I've got it. <laughs> I can show you. I know you got it. <laughs> I wouldn't throw it at anybody else. You got it. I appreciate All right. it. <laughs> And Valerie Stokes, Jeff, uh, one of our friends from Barron County, she's watching. And I just saw Samantha Deshear, who now teaches in Arkansas, is tuning in to today's show. So hello, Samantha. It's great hey, to hear Samantha. you. Power of digital tools, right? And Valerie, I will say Valerie and the Barron County folks are phenomenal. They are our leads for uh, several of the DPOJ categories. We, most of the video categories, we wouldn't even be able to, to pull off without their help. So thanks to Barron County and Valerie for sure. Hey, everybody. Amen. All right. So thanks so much, Donna, uh, library media specialist across Kentucky. If you would like to learn more about uh, incorporating STLP and empowering students uh, and leading from the library on the STLP front, just reach out to Donna and we'll have her contact information in the show notes from today. Now let's move on to the one and only Miss Katie Newton, who is leading from the library with her remarkable makerspace strategy. Over to you, Miss Katie. Makerspace. So I love our makerspace. Makerspace has allowed me to build more relationships with more kids. Um, and then by knowing what they like and knowing what they do more, they are turning into STLP projects um, by the minute. I have lots of people that are going to participate in digital art for the first time this year. So I'm super excited about that. Um, last year, I took a giant maternity leave and was gone for six months so the only thing we participated in last year was the dpoj um projects that i had another teacher submit while i was out i worked with her and getting those submitted so we still participated but <laughs> we didn't get to go to regionals um or state last year but we're back and ready to roll um, and we definitely utilize our makerspace to um, accentuate our projects. So that works really well. Our makerspace started really small. Um, it started with me reading The Worlds of Making by Laura Fleming. It's the bigger book on your screen there. It's super short and super concise. And I liked it because it was short and I don't have time to read long books like kids say. <laughs> um, but it lays out things very user friendly, I think, um, and what how to look at a makerspace and what to do with the space and how to include um, your community in the space and things like that. So her next book, The Kickstart Guide to Making, I think would have been great to have first, but they work really well together. Um, the Kickstart Guide you can write in, so you can take notes, you can meet with your planning team, you can do all the things um, with the group that's helping you plan your space, uh, which I really like this summer because I'm kind of re-energized and adding new ideas to our space um, as we go. So the key to a makerspace is to start small, start wherever you can. You don't have to have all the things to start your space. Um, I always say a makerspace is just a space for you to get to create, um, which can be anything. So we started with coloring. Um, and I always tell everybody that I got in big trouble that day because the kids were late to class after they left the library because they were so into coloring their bookmarks. Um, I have still, I'm apologizing and make sure that I apologize to teachers when they're late from coming out of the library. Sorry, but we're having fun. <laughs> um, you can do projects. I started with book talking and adding a STEM project onto that as I built our space. That worked really well. And donors choose. I can't talk about enough because every year I earn a grant basically through donors choose to help add to our space. Um, just a week ago, um, the owner of Craigslist helped funded the rest of my project. And so we got lots of new magnet tiles and Kiva planks and cardboard tools. 
So now I've got to save some cardboard for Wait my Wait a kids. second. Katie, did you just say the founder of Craigslist? Did did I miss that somehow? Yeah. Did you elaborate? Yeah, he, he funded he funded he was funding STEM projects over that weekend and mine got funded. Mine got pulled into the group and I got all my materials last week. So they're already in our space. It's exciting, right? <laughs> That's awesome stuff. And, and really, I, I think here the theme is you're advocating for the work. You're advocating for the resources. And earlier you said that you had to apologize to teachers sometimes because kids would come back late from the library. And I just want to say I when I was a library media specialist and I, I did that work for seven years, I told everyone that I had the best classroom in the school. It really is. It's the best classroom in the whole school. And the most beautiful part is you get to work with every kid. And uh, so I totally understand what you're saying. And I had to apologize a whole bunch, too, because look at that picture. I mean, can I come and play in your maker space? It looks yeah. so fun. How many times? Um, when you do start your maker space, you will want to know how to organize it. Um, so when you start building your space and you're getting some things, you're going to want to separate them or tag them or have a way for kids to shelve stuff back. Because the biggest rule, I have two rules for my makerspace. One, you have to participate. So it's mandatory fun. And two, you have to put it away. Because um, there's over 750 kids here and they come to the makerspace every two weeks. So we have to take good care of the stuff and put it away nicely. Um, so I color code our stuff, you can see, so the kids know the red goes together. Behind all those things on the shelf are the same colors, so they know where to put them back um, at the end of the day. Because, you know, middle schoolers sometimes forget how to read, um, but they still remember their colors from kindergarten, so they can match colors really well. So Katie, uh, Brooke Whitlow just jump, uh, jumped in to join us. And Brooke, I know, used to work on your team in Hardin County. Brooke, uh, hello. How are you? And did you ever get to go to this makerspace of Katie's? Uh, yes, of course. Um, I I was actually, I tweeted when this, um, when we first pushed out this episode, I tweeted that um, Katie sat in Eric Schinniger's um, session with me. Do you remember this, Katie? Yeah. And now, I mean, wouldn't you say that was really when you first like took off with makerspaces in your library was after his little um, ditty there? Yes, definitely. I think that was really the first time too that I had ever like heard it called a makerspace or, you know, kind of understood like the concept of a makerspace. Um, so, I mean, I guess I'm really grateful to old Eric Schinniger, Um, and I'm probably not pronouncing his name correctly. Forgive me, but um, yeah, so it was just like, I just really like your approach to makerspaces, Katie, because you just did a little bit at a time. You did what you could. You've been just diligent um, over the past three years or whatever, however long it's been, and just really built an amazing, incredible space um, by a little bit over time. And I think that, I think that's really what's inspiring too for, or at least to share with um, other library media specialists who want to venture into it because it, it is like a rabbit hole um, and it can be really overwhelming. I think when you think about, you know, all the possibilities that are out there, but um, anyway, kudos to you. I'll be quiet. I'm sorry. I, sorry. I'm late friends. Thank you. Um, it is. I forgot what I was going to say. I have kids outside of my door maker spacing at the moment. Um, they're already building and crashing things all around me. But um, I think the key is to start wherever you're at. So, and Schenninger, I don't know how to say his name either. He is friends with Laura Fleming. His Laura Fleming was his librarian. And I had already been researching her. I had already followed her on Twitter and was like, okay, I'm doing this. I think I texted you during that show. I was like, I'm doing this. Get ready. <laughs> We're going to go for it. Um, and I jumped in by asking all my teachers for their junk. So teachers need to clean out their closets and their file cabinets. And they have stuff, all kinds of stuff in their drawers from different projects they've done in class um, and 
have leftovers and can give it to you. And you now get to store it in a filing cabinet <laughs> in the library. But I didn't have to buy any spoons for the catapults. I didn't have to buy um, toothpicks. I didn't have to buy um, pipe cleaners. Was some of our stuff, first stuff we used, the little pom-poms that they could catapult. Didn't have to buy those. I mean, my teachers had all kinds of rubber bands. People gave me rubber bands. I don't know why they gave me rubber bands, but we used those. And we just started from there. And then my technology coordinator, Leif Tab, saw what we were doing um, with Brooke. And they started bringing me treats like Makey Makey. And they brought me little bits. And we just went with it. We did a lot of art at the beginning because everybody has paper and markers. Um, and the kids loved it. They just loved the time, the 20 to 25 minutes they get to Makerspace to take a brain break and do something else um, than study for social studies or science or reading or math. Um, and now we have lots of things, but we're still not very digital in that. So even if you're a library that has a cart, if you have computers sitting in a room, you could have a digital makerspace. Um, you could do oh, the art. Real quick, Katie, about the digital makerspace. First of all, I wanted to say I just tweeted out your makerspace strategy number one, and I quoted you. I started my makerspace in the beginning simply by asking my teachers to clean out all of their junk. Yep. I think that is a really good idea. Just start with that. Find things that kids can tinker with. But you were talking about the technology component of your makerspace. And one of the things that we're doing in JCPS is we have a lot of really cool uh, resources for makerspaces in our inventory. And so right now we're barcoding them and partnering with our library media specialist director. So we're we have a whole database to barcode and, and kind of archive all of our tech. And then schools will be able to check it out for one month. This is part of our strategy that we're launching in December. Uh, so schools will be able to see everything we have and then using a Google form, they can check something out and we will have it delivered to their school. So we'll have Spheros and Ozobots. I mean, we even have some Vex stuff that's really, really cool here in JCPS. And so they'll have one month to play with it in the Library Media Center. And then the kids have to make a video showing how other kids can utilize the technology. And we're gonna upload those vi videos on our YouTube channel, on our student makerspace playlist. Um, and so then if the Library Media Specialist wants to actually buy that uh, technology for their school, we're going to work on a grant match with them if their students awesome. make that video. So that's a strategy at the district level. Of course, we have over 150 schools and, and so we're getting makerspace tech inventory now, cataloging it, and then people will be able to check it out for one month at a time increment. So we're so excited to roll out that strategy um, in December. That's great. Um, and that's a that's awesome that they get to try out the tech because there are kids at different schools that may not like it. So then you don't have to buy it and waste your money on that tech. Because um, I've found over the three years that there's some things that kids want to mess around with and there's other things that they just don't. Um, so I've had some wasted money go into the space. Um, so that's awesome. Hey, Katie, did you share the story about... Um the uh, oh my gosh I think I, I forgot who it was it was chess you had chess out you were talking about like starting oh, with yeah. art did you share that story already no I think you should not to be okay. bossy but I think you should sh share that story right on um so a big thing in my makerspace is building relationships so it's a great time for me I felt like I was messing out on relationships with kids being stuck behind my desk just checking out books and then teachers were taking them back to class. And that's all I got with them was the two seconds that it takes to check out a book. And then I don't see you again. So now they stay with me for the whole class period, which is 42 to 44 minutes um, every time that they come check out. And so that teacher stays with me as well. So it's a great time for me to collaborate with that teacher and get that teacher out having fun with kids. And one of them in particular was a brand new K-TIP teacher and kind of having a hard go at it, trying to get everything rolling at the same time. And the kids, um, I just pushed him really hard to get involved with the kids. And we had some chess boards and checkerboards that I had put out for the makerspace. And 
he was like, well, I know how to play chess. I said, well, go play chess. Go play chess with the kids. He's like, they don't want to listen to me play chess. I was like, yes, they do. Go play chess. Like, say, who wants to play me? And, of course, you know, kids are competitive just like we are. And they're like, I will. And so he lit up when these kids would start begging him to play chess with them. And he started teaching kids about the game and his love of the game really shone, shined through with them. And he built so many relationships and fell in love with his craft as a teacher because he knew then how to make connections with these kids and started a chess team and does all kinds of stuff. He actually used donors choose to get like 18 fancy chess boards. Um, and he would roll them out when they'd come to the makerspace. It was um, fun to watch. And that right there, my friends, is leading from the library. Wouldn't you agree? Kudos to you, Katie. Kudos to you. I know that story like gets me all up in my feels because, I mean, I really feel like you, I mean, it was you providing a space that really allowed that teacher to, to find you know, his passion and flourish and the kids connect with him. And I just, it's, it's truly one of my favorite stories that has come out of, you know, your makerspace. So, so no, on, the, on the chat, I just have to give a shout out to my girl. Uh, she has been my angel since coming to JCPS. Dr. Lynn Reynolds is on our chat, which to me is a, is a huge honor uh, for her to be here with us. Uh, she is one remarkable leader on the library media specialist revisioning movement and and she's going to be a part of our think tank and and she's just a total rock star and doing great work in jcps and she's on that makerspace strategy team with me that i was just talking about so dr lynn in the house i'm so excited to see you when and is dr lynn going to come on the show is my that's question right brooke that's what i was going to say so dr lynn's coming on the show next week on the 25th you guys will get to meet the one and only Dr. Lynn Reynolds and her team on our show. And they're going to be talking about the librarian's backpack, which is an awesome initiative that they created for uh, librarians and JCPS to really lead from the library. And she's all in on maker spaces. So, Hey, Dr. Lynn, glad you're here. All right. Anything else, Katie, that you'd like to share? Katie, I did want to ask you, I saw Pinterest was on your slides. Is that where you get a lot of your, inspiration for things um because i love the jcps is now get that like there you guys are going to have your own pinterest board as far as like ideas on how here's something i've got and then now how am i going to use it i can look at that um, and see if that can inspire students but talk to us about pinterest how did you organize that some of us get a little nervous about pinterest i think because it is a different animal in the in the technology world but tell, tell us more about how you what, what you're using pinterest for sure so at the beginning when i had all the junk that came to the library and I had to store it. I tried to come up with things to do when I book talked. So it goes back to my public library days where you do a story and then you do a craft. So that craft just became a STEM craft basically. Um, and I tried to find things that use spoons, rubber bands, pipe cleaners. So I would look through, I would search STEM projects or makerspace projects that all kind of go hand in hand for middle school. Um, and you still get a plethora of opportunities to look through, but it is just looking through and seeing what you think your kids will do or what will match with the story you're reading or the informational text. I made a, them read an article about coloring and why it's important for your brain before we ever colored um, our bookmarks. So Pinterest has tons of opportunities. You don't have to recreate the wheel when you're trying to develop makerspace ideas or STEM project ideas within the library. Someone's already done it, I promise. <laughs> Courtney, is there anything else out there on the chat that people have said that you can share with our panelists? Um, a lot of good ideas. Like they, the ideas that you all have talked about from um, how you built the STLP, the different showcases in Madison, talking about, I mean, the Pinterest board. A lot of people are just chiming in that it's it's sparking interest and giving people ideas. And that's what it's designed to do. If we don't connect and share, then it's going to be hard to grow. So um, I think it's awesome how you all don't care to share these ideas. I'm sure if anyone reaches out to you all, 
that you all will be happy to provide resources. Um, and I want to give Jeff, every time I email Jeff Sabolski, he is like Johnny on the spot to help. And I can, I think the entire panel can say to have one person that's leading this STLP state umbrella and I'm over in the East and I can, I know all of you are all across the States. You do an amazing job to give us support, to get, let us know that we, um, I don't know that we can do it. You support us really, really well. And, and I appreciate it. And I know the panel does too. So. Well, it's my pleasure. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the best job yeah. in the state of Kentucky. I'm the, I'm the luckiest guy around. So really it's, 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 it's just awesome. Just cause you guys keep coming up with new cool things. To get me excited, so then I want to go back and make sure that you have everything you need to do something else cool. So it's it's a great great partnership all the way around. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone. This was a great show, and we're so honored to have uh, Donna and Katie here sharing with the rest of the library media specialists in the state. And I hope everyone can see the connectivity in all of our work, uh, no matter what you do. Um, across the spectrum, we're all innovating and working hard and growing for kids. And remember, STLP is your whole school. So keep that in mind. Right. Right. Should I just drop the mic right there for you, Jeff? <laughs> uh, so real quick, because I know um, we want to get on with with our day. So Courtney, um, Brooke, Elaine, would you all share how everyone can get continued support and stay connected to the Kentucky Go Digital Movement? Um, one way is for the video support that you have here on the channel. If you just go to kygodigital.com, um, any on-demand services. So if you're talking about forms or anything that's been talked about in the show, you can go back and look at some really cool videos. Just click subscribe, and that's one way to connect. Don't forget about us on Facebook, too. We are on the Facebook, Kentucky Go Digital. And I will tell you something. Maybe I can't tell you everything right now, but I feel like everyone needs to know that surprises are coming, especially on the Facebook. So <laughs> Jeff will be really excited about our surprise Wony girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all you get. That's it. Don't forget, find us on Facebook, y'all. Connect with us on the hashtag there, hashtag Kentucky Digital. <laughs> And lastly, so we're going to be rolling out the Kentucky Go Digital regional dates in early spring, but we are very excited to announce that we will be having a new North Central Regional hosted by Bellarmine University late next summer. This is awesome news for those up there. And don't forget to, as you create, connect your good ideas to our hashtag so that others can share them around the state. Until next time, Kentucky Go Digital. Get involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel 